Christopher Ellis with Love You Till the End of Time. Isn't that lovely? 1211, Colourful Life with me, Rosemary Laye, with you until one o'clock. Emerson Ford will be here very, very shortly. But for now, in the studio is contemporary artist Sylvia Krupinska, who is here to profile her Artist of the Month, a David Rufue. Now, Sylvia... Good afternoon to you. And to you. Hello, Rosemary. Hello. We should be profiling you, girl, because I know things are moving and shaking <laughs> even within your realm. Tell us, tell us your latest news. Thank you. Yes, my latest news is that uh, myself and the artists from Debut Contemporary have been chosen to go to uh, do an exhibition in LA, Oka Museum, in, uh, over Christmas. So. <gasps> This is wonderful. Yes, it's fantastic. Wonderful. Now, how many of you in total have been chosen? There are 29 of us doing this show, uh, and we all are going, hopefully, and we are trying to ship our works there and work really hard at publicity and getting the press, and oh, it's just fantastic. It is. It's very exciting. So, so, so the 29, have they been selected across the UK? They've been selected from uh, by the curators of the Oka Museum in L.A., so they came Anna. over from LA. They looked at no. They they work with the debut contemporary gallery right. on this. Okay. Well, congratulations Thank to you. you. And is that going to be over the Christmas period? Yes, yeah, starting twenty first of December and finishing on twelfth of January, and the private view is on the seventh of January. So. You definitely want to be there for that. Of course. <laughs> so it's going to be Christmas and New Year in yes, L.A. Yes, absolutely. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. OK, but you're here to profile David Rufue. Like I said, we should be profiling you, girl. But let's talk about David then. Yes. Uh, so here we are again. The artist of the month uh, is David Rufue. Uh, I'd like to start by saying how I got to know mm. David and his work. One day I was walking in uh, Knightsbridge, as you do, <laughs> <laughs> and I passed a gallery and I was immediately captured by a lotus leaf in the window and I was thinking, what's this? I have to see this exhibition. Mm. So I went downstairs and there it was. The exhibition is what was called Morphosis and uh, it was the show of this artist and designer, David Rufouillet. Um, uh, and the gallery, first of all, is called Andipa Gallery. Andipa Contemporary, which is uh, on andipa.com, is probably good for, for the uh, listeners to kind of follow us as mm -hmm. we speak. So there you go. <laughs> um, so as I was saying, I was in the gallery and the whole wall of the gallery was covered with the installation of lotus leaves. Mm -hmm. And I felt like in the dream, you know, that's something I was like dreaming about. <laughs> and, um uh, and the sculptures and all the, the installation pieces that were also hanging in the gallery were almost, almost floating, like very tiny and bigger and, and big ones, cocoons, that were basically set. Uh, it was the cages, silver cages, and the, the artist works with silkworms, mm -hmm. and he, he constructs these cages and lets the silkworms go inside and create this cocoon around it. It's fascinating. He works. Basically, the main inspiration for, for David, I understand, is the contrast of the nature and the man-made. Mm -hmm. Nature and the, the uh, today, you know, the culture. Culture and, and nature is the, the big word, words in his uh, Work. Mm. So I'm, I'm trying to visualise this myself. You're yes. just completely surrounded by <laughs> lotus leaves. Yeah. So one wall is completely sort of almost like not wallpaper because it was 3D in the Vietnamese lotus leaves. Mm -hmm. um, they were kind of coming onto you and the whole wall was covered with them, which created the environment for the, the uh, floating sculptures in this space. Um, so, for instance, uh, he made the hybrid series sculptures. He made nearly 1,000 little silver cages wow. where he experimented with these silkworms <laughs> and the research he was describing was oh, just so long time you know and really he he was studying the, the behaviors of eating habits of silkworms how they move what's the lifespan what the colors uh, of the silk that they produce mm -hmm. uh, he told me that uh it's one and a half to two meters long. When they're creating the cocoon around uh, f f in in the cage, mm -hmm. it's between one and a half to, f to two meters long, wow. non-stop silk wow. thread, and d things like that. He was just completely bombarding mm. me with all these facts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how many silkworms does he have in this installation? There are no 
they are the, the silkworms are already gone because mm -hmm. they change into a butterfly. Yes. So what you can see in the exhibition is, is uh, there are probably about... Um, I'm guessing 20 artworks, mm -hmm. different different cages, different silkworms sort of installation, which are which are made with in co collaboration with these silkworms. Mm -hmm. and after they leave, they become a butterfly. Uh, it's uh, almost like a reminder of of how he worked together with with the nature. It's very beautiful. So, is David a sculptor first and foremost? Uh, he is a designer and an artist. His background is in jewelry. Mm. Uh, contemporary uh, contemporary uh, sort of almost abstract jewelry his jewelry is very unique because it's actually unwearable but it's unwearable it's unwearable in that sense that you wouldn't be going to a shop and buying a piece of jewelry like that he he makes uh, he makes these um, installational pieces of jewelry that acts with the body of of a person so he would put uh, he would install this little cage, for instance, on a ear. Uh, he put a cage on, on, on the ear of, of, of someone he knew. Mm -hmm. And then the little sort of sigworm would, would, would create the cocoon in the cage and would sort of crawl around the, the ear and then there's a little butterfly. <laughs> so it's very much performance as well as the jewellery. Um, uh, saying that, he also has uh, jewellery that is wearable, which is called the... Um, the uh, diamond shot. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's another piece of, of work he produced, which, which is actually uh, creates at the end a, a diamond ring. So uh, that's just another one to mention. Mm. Somehow that silkworm keeps coming into his installations, doesn't it? Yes, it's <laughs> it's, uh, it's really captivating and original. Nothing I've seen before. Maybe it sounds a little bit creepy mm. uh, <laughs> at first, but believe me, when you see it, you you would understand. It's spectacular. If you just tuned in, welcome along. Sylvia Krupinska is in the house and she's profiling her artist of the month, David Rue Fouillet. We'll speak some more to Sylvia after. Contemporary artist Sylvia Krupinska is profiling David Rue Fouillet. Now, David, that, his surname sounds very French. Is he a French guy? Yes, absolutely. Uh, he was born in 1978 uh, uh, of Danish and French parentage. And his uh, first training... It was in uh, Denmark where he studied jewellery design, glass blowing, and graphic design. Uh, already at that time was interested in uh, all these amazing yes. sort of jewellery. And following that, he, uh, he did a degree in Geneva on jewellery and object design, which, uh, which he was describing to, to me. It was, again, spectacular. But after that, he was invited to do a an amazing residency in uh, Japan in the Kyoto University of Art and Design where he began discovering these life creatures and he mm. became interested in the spiders and and uh, worms and mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and his re most recent degree is a master degree from Royal College of Arts uh, here in London in goldsmithing silversmithing metalwork and jewelry mm. which uh, you, you can see from what I'm saying is his work is very linked to jewellery but it's very arty as well at the same time he bridges design and the art in a very original and unique way mm. so, so what's David working on now? anything else to do with silkworms? Uh, <laughs> I suspect so yes I, I gave him that question as well and he said he's got a, a number of projects that he's working on at the moment which uh, he'll be talking uh, to you know to the us very soon so mm. I'll, as, as soon as I find out I'll let you know mm. and, and it seems like oh, he obviously likes it's a bit like you we know about the you know the the real life textures and what have you <laughs> yeah it's very it's organic work, work very organic work so I can see a collaboration between you two Sylvia yes well <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'd be lovely he, he he's uh, fantastic and also um he likes collaborating not uh, you know he likes collaboration between uh, like I said before with the living sort of worms mm. and spiders he was telling me about how he was researching spiders and uh, he had to make these special cages for for little flies that he was capturing to feed the spiders and mm. uh, things like that. You see, now his background. I mean, you were talking about what he studied, and jewelry is the common denominator in everything that he does. But now he seems to be loving nature, and I would just wonder whether it's more on the nature path now as opposed to the jewelry. 
I think he always has been from his talking. I got the impression that's what, that was the main drive that he it was driven by this uh, since the beginning. The 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 jewelry he studied also it was it, it wasn't the technical jewelry as I think it was more conceptual and sort of contemporary, innovative mm -hmm. today's sort of design linked with art jewellery. Mm -hmm. And just remind our listeners where they can actually see his work. His work can be seen and very well is also described on Andipa uh, uh, website, which is A-N-D-I-P-A dot com. Um, you can search through the artists. Amongst them is also Matisse and uh, um, Banksy and David is one of the names that appear on the website. So mm. check him out. And also what type of person, I suppose, will be intrigued or excited by his work? Someone who loves... Um, Entering in different environments and spaces, almost like a rainforest, uh, a quirky design, art piece, collaborations with the nature, um, that sort of person. Organic, naturalistic work he does. So any, anyone who likes the sound someone, of that. Someone who likes to be at one with nature. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia, thank you so much as always. And listen, all the very best in L.A. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Bye-bye.